Hello, my name is Jared, and as you can see, I'm trying something a little bit new, adding a face cam, see how well that works. Uh, we'll see if we continue doing it. Leave a comment below if you have an opinion on whether this is a good idea, or you just don't want to see my face at all. Anyways, I want to start a new series of just me recommending video games that I've really enjoyed. I'm not necessarily going to talk about, you know, the technical reasons that this game is good. Uh, I'm mostly going to focus on what made it an enjoyable experience for me personally. And so these are just my personal recommendations and you can take them and leave them. And today we're gonna to start with Thomas Was Alone. This is just a really simple game that gives you a really interesting experience, I'd say. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, we're, I'm just gonna do the scenario select and start from the beginning. We're not gonna to go too far into it. The whole game narrative is delivered through voiceover and then through these little texts so that is different also in the respect of how simple the graphics are as you can see right here so I'll go ahead and let the narration speak for itself Thomas was alone well a weird first thought to have so yeah the objective of this game is really simple all you're doing is getting uh, the little shapes into the white linings that match their shape. And that's all you do, you just go from level to level, just doing that with this narrator talking, kind of describing what these characters are thinking and saying. Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three. Falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. Yeah, so you're just going from level to level doing this. The learning curve is really low, so this is a great game for anyone that's not really big into games. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to, what's the word? Jump. And they do a really good job of trying to make sure that you understand exactly how this game works. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. Thomas. And so you just go from level to level. The narration's really nice. I want to get to the part where we get more characters. Dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him. Kind of moving through forward. If you play the game, you'll want to watch the narrations or listen to them. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might or might not be important. So, once again, it's simple. I believe this even started as a flash game and then was fleshed out into a full game. It goes for quite a while. It's not a super long game, but I think it's long enough that you're not really playing this for the challenge, you're playing it for the experience and the story designed just for him he wondered why was the world testing him no too obvious it's a little on the nose when it comes to uh its humor at times you know as far as how video game development goes Something about the boiling toxic glowing water intimidated thomas he didn't like it he certainly didn't want to swim in it it's a fairly forgiving game in its beginning but it, the difficulty gets ramped up quite a bit as you go the along. The was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. So while the narration is definitely what shines in this game, it's, it's not really the platforming. The platforming's interesting. I'm not much of a platforming fan, so I can't really speak as much to whether this is great platforming. I know it can get a little difficult towards the end, but the story is what drives this. 
and you build a connection to these characters, you really do, which is funny because they're just Thomas simple shapes. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. Come on, jump. So, it's just a very charming game. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Uh, finally made it up. Uh, there are going to be parts that will really annoy you and frustrate you. It, it, the difficulty will go up, but this is a pretty good game for somebody who isn't as big into games. It's a great one for people who like something very narrative based. And then you get these walls of text that kind of describe in, like, from somebody in the future writing about these events how exactly this works. Uh, and you get that, like, every chapter. And so now we have two characters. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to his skinny <laughs> red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? So yeah, now we have two characters, and this is where the fun is. Then you have to switch between the two. As you can see, Chris can't jump as high. Uh, and he's a lot shorter. So he has to jump onto Thomas to get there. And so eventually you'll have several characters that you're going around with. It's a lot of fun. And so. Been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. And see, now Chris can't get this far. Actually, not technically graceful, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. What was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place? What's interesting is that. Oh, dang it, I forgot about that. What's interesting is that. Uh, you feel so much connection to these characters, and they have so much personality. More personality than some fully fleshed, like, literally fleshed characters that you'll see in, you know, any medium. And you grow really attached to them, you know exactly how they're feeling. And it's done in a way that if these were voiceovers, you wouldn't care, but because the narrator is so effective at telling the story, it's... It's like you're listening to a story. The only thing that might be annoying to some people is, as you can see, you kind of have to wait a while before it will finish. It's like you could solve these puzzles much faster than the narration goes, but you want to hear the narration. So you end up just sitting there for a while listening to the narration, and then you'll go because you don't want to finish the game too soon. So now you can see Chris's advantage is that he's smaller and he can push these buttons. So button pushing is going to get really big. Uh, and so this is where some of the more tedious platforming happens, where you just have to move one character, and you just go like this, and then, and then, you, get, and then you get Chris up, and you get Thomas up, and then it just, you know. And th this happens quite a bit. chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. So, like I said, the platforming's not super great, but the story, if this is the kind of story that interests you and you want to see where these characters go, then I, I would definitely recommend. Get this when it's on sale. It'll probably come on sale soon uh, for the uh, winter sales. If you're watching this when it comes out. And so Chris now, the feeling that things are taking a significant now, turn for now the Thomas world. needs Chris and able to get up here, and then the walls go, and we, and we all fall. So, so this will be the last one that I do, just to kind of show you. You don't want. You gotta be careful with Chris, because. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, I've heard a bunch of people have different opinions on these characters. Some people, I, I, I've known a few people that like Chris, but a lot of people I know are just like, Chris, you're such a jerk. Why are you so mean to Thomas? So, you know, you're, everybody gets their own opinions on these characters. So that's as far as I'm going to go uh, with this. I will say that if you're concerned about 
graphics at all. I don't have it on super high settings because otherwise that would really drop the frame rate for me. So I, ha I have this on very low settings. So it looks much nicer and sharper when you have it on the highest settings. So it, it looks a little jagged, but all that smoothed out in higher resolution and higher quality settings. So anyways, this is Thomas Was Alone. In the end, it's a charming experience, as I said before, that if you aren't as interested in gameplay, but you're interested in story and character development, particularly with squares and rectangles, then I highly recommend that you try this out. So, I've been Jared, and please join me for the next video. If you have any other suggestions of games that you'd like me to do videos on, then please leave a comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!